I remember preparing for my first trip to Costa Rica, ordering the Dean and Gallagher's field guide, leafing through it after long days of work. The moment I saw the amount of fly catchers and looked at the illustrations, I knew that I was in trouble. There are 78 of the so-called tyrant fly catchers in my edition of the field guide. Some of them are very distinctive in either appearance, behavior or habitat. Now, if you ask, where's the fun in that? Rest assured, a lot of them aren't that distinctive at all. And since he who cannot teach us, I thought it would be fun and maybe helpful to a few of you to explore this family of birds in a little bit more detail. Long story short, this is part one of a little mini-series about Costa Rican flycatchers. So let's begin and let's not jump into the deep end straight away. For our first video, I'd like to focus on some of the most common flycatchers you'll encounter in Costa Rica. The Great Kiskadee and its lookalikes. Not only is the Great Kiskadee the most common flycatcher in Costa Rica, it's really ubiquitous. If you travel the country anywhere, anytime, be prepared to be awoken by its characteristic and name-giving calls. Like all the birds we cover today, the Great Kiskadee has a bright yellow belly and a black mask. Measuring 23 centimeters or 9 inches, it's also one of the largest flycatchers in the country. Its back is brown, with rufous wings and tail. Note that the white superciliaries, that's the line of feathers above the eye, meet in the nape of the bird. Very similar to the Kiskadee, at first glance at least, is the boat-built flycatcher. They're the same size and share the same overall pattern. Both are very common. The similarities end when you look at the bill. The bird is quite aptly named. Its bill is much wider than the Kiskadee's. At a second glance, you may also notice that the coloring is quite different. Back, wings and tail are more or less uniformly olive brownish. The biggest giveaway might be its call, which almost sounds like a suffering Hoffman's woodpecker. The golden-bellied flycatcher is only slightly smaller than the two birds mentioned before. However, its habitat is much more restricted. It's far less common and prefers middle elevations in the center of the country. It is not found below 800 meters. Its main distinguishing feature is the dark throat stripe that all other similar flycatchers lack. All right, time to move down in order of magnitude. The social flycatcher, another one of Costa Rica's most common birds. It almost looks like a miniature Kiskadee. Measuring 15 centimeters, it's almost 10 centimeters shorter. Its white superciliaries are relatively broad and they end right behind the ear. Also note the short bill. The social flycatcher has a red crown patch but don't count on seeing it in the field. Just like the Kiskadee and the boat built flycatcher, you'll find these little fellows almost everywhere in the country. The social flycatcher has two lookalikes that seem very similar at the first glance. They're the same size and can be quite tricky to tell apart. The rusty margin flycatcher and the white ringed flycatcher. Let's start with the rusty margin flycatcher. Luckily, this bird is anything but widespread in Costa Rica. It can seldomly be seen in the far south of the country, around the Golfo Dulce area to the east of the Osa Peninsula. The name gives away the main distinguishing feature, rusty edges on the primaries. Also, its ear covers are darker than the social flycatchers and its crown patch is yellow. Hard to use this information in the field though. If you're looking out for this bird, it's probably a good idea to pay attention to its call. The white ringed flycatcher appears virtually on the other side of the country, in Caribbean wetlands. That's good news, as we don't have to worry about confusing it with the rusty margin flycatcher. It's also a little easier to tell them apart from the social flycatcher. The bill is larger and the white superciliaries meet at the nape. In perfect conditions, you might see the white line above the eyelid, but again, maybe not a terrible idea to familiarize yourself with the call if you're out looking. Our final species today will be the grey cap flycatcher, the one that's easiest to distinguish from the others. It's a fairly common bird in the wet lowlands, both on the Caribbean and the Pacific side of the country. As the name suggests, it has a grey crown and nape, and its white subsidiary is very slim and ends just behind the eye. It doesn't really resemble the tropical kingbird, another larger common flycatcher with a grey head, but if you're confused, and if you're looking at a bird with a grey head and white superciliaries, no matter how thin, the grey cap flycatcher is what you're looking at. So these seven species that appear similar at first can be told apart quite readily just by remembering a few field marks. 
Let me know down below if you enjoy content like this and if you find it helpful. I'm already committed to doing a few more flycatcher videos, but I'm not against the idea of extending it to a few other families as well. Anyways, thanks for watching, see you soon and take care. Ciao!